Hello, welcome to the Prophetic Channel. I am so glad that you are here today. I want to thank everyone that has subscribed to our channel and have given us that thumbs up. We really appreciate it. If you are new to the channel, if you would please do two things. One is that you would hit that subscribe button. Second thing is that you would hit that like button. When you subscribe to this channel, you'll be one of the first person to receive the new videos as they're coming out. Second thing is that when you hit that like button, this video will be shown to other viewers. So please send this video to a family member, a friend. Let them see what God is doing. You know, all day today and, and all day yesterday, I've just been feeling in my spirit like something big is about to happen. I don't know what's about to happen, but I know the Lord had given me a word. I don't know if it was a couple of months back or a month ago and said that something is going to, going to be revealed. Something's going to happen. It's going to make our jaw drop. Something is about to happen. And not only myself, but I've been hearing other people giving testimony that they feel that something is about to happen. And I feel that we are right there. We're right there. The rapture may be the next big event. The big event that happens, considering what is taking place in Israel and all those other countries that are around Israel that are getting ready to attack. You know, we're, we're, the, the time clock of God is about to hit 12. And I believe the next event that's going to happen is going to be the rapture. I received a comment with, concerning the same subject. I received a comment from someone that said, you know, what a sad day when the rapture does not happen. What a sad day that everything that you believe is not true. And I responded to this person this way. If I lived a righteous life, a good life, and uh, I kept my tongue from evil and, and I didn't oppress anyone, I didn't do anyone any harm, any evil, but I lived a good life. And I, I explained to this person, I said, I have lost nothing. If all this is not true and I die and it, and it ends there, and then I have lost nothing. But and then I turned and the, sort of I kind of turned the tables on him and said, uh, "But what if everything that I that I'm living for, everything that's in the Word of God, everything that God says about the past, the present, and the future is true? Then I have gained everything. But you have lost everything because you do not believe in God and you do not believe in eternal life." And you do not believe in the rapture. That day will be a sad day for you when your eyes are finally open and you realize that everything that was written in the Word of God actually came to pass. So I want to tell you this. The Bible says that Jesus is coming back. You know what? He is coming back. So I want to touch some scriptures today uh, that deal with the rapture. I want to deal with some scriptures today that deal with the rapture. If you have your Bible... Let's go to John chapter 14 in the Word of God. And I want to show you how Jesus was telling his disciples, uh, I'm going to leave, but I'm going to come back. I'm going to leave and I'm going to prepare a place for you. Look at John chapter 14. And I'm going to begin on verse 1. John chapter 14. And I'm going to begin on verse 1. The Bible says, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms or many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. In other words, Jesus is saying, if I'm lying, then it's not true. But Jesus says, I'm telling you truth. That's when the Bible, whenever you read and you see the word that says, verily, verily. And in other words, he's saying, pay attention. Open your ears to understand. Open your spiritual mind to understand. And he says it twice. Verily, verily. In other words, pay close attention attention to what I am saying. So the Bible says this in verse, I'm picking up on verse 3. And if I go and prepare a place for you, and I, and I will come for you. Let me read that again, verse 3. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you with me that you may be where I am. Did you see that? He says, where I am, I'm going to take you. Where I'm going, I'm going to take you there. And see, a lot of people believe because they have not studied the Scriptures. They have not studied the book of Revelations. When the rapture happens and we go to be with the Lord for seven years, did you know that our destination is not heaven? In other words, we are going to heaven and we're going to be there for a little while. 
But then we are coming back to earth to reign with the Lord Jesus Christ in the millennium. The millennium being a thousand years, Jesus Christ will be the ruler of the entire world. And later on in the following programs, I would love to touch on it. Touch on the second coming of Christ. Touch on the millennium. Touch on the great white throne. There's a lot of things that are going to happen. Other things are going to to take place. Now, remember that I talked and I said before that the rapture and the second coming of Christ are two different events. There are two different events. So Jesus said, where I'm going, I'm going to bring you to myself. So Jesus says, when Jesus comes, in fact, let me take you somewhere. Let's go to 1 Thessalonians in the Word of God. 1 Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians in the Word of God. And I want to show you something. And I'm going to begin on verse 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, and I'm going to begin on verse 1. So it says, Now, brothers, about the times and dates, we do not need to write to you. In other words, he's saying, you need to be ready. Be ready for the rapture. We don't have to be guessing dates and, you know, that we can sin as much as we can. And then when we feel that the time is right, we're going to give our lives. That's not living for God. That is not living for the Lord. You know, just like the ten virgins of the oil. And you can read that story in, in, your, in your word. But th there were five that were ready, that had oil, that were ready to meet the bridegroom. You and I need to be ready. Live, and I'm pretty sure you've seen probably this bumper sticker or a meme that says, Live today like if Jesus was coming back today. Live like if Jesus was coming uh, live for Him as Jesus was coming back today. That's how we need to live. We need to live fully and completely. Not just when we are in church. You know, Not just when we're around people that know God. We, that's when we, 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 we kind of uh, act right or we, we speak correctly. And then when we go, go home, it's, we're a totally different person. It should not be that way. It should not. Now, the Bible says this. He says, brother, it is not for you to know, but he says in verse 2, For you know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. See, the thief does not tell you when he's coming. He comes by and he surprises you. The same thing, Jesus will come. Jesus, when people less expect it, he will show up. He will come and he'll come for, the, for a church that is without spot and without blemish. Now, so the Bible says in verse 3, while people are saying peace and safety, isn't that what we're hearing right now? What is going on in Israel, what is going on in Gaza, what's going on in Jordan, what is going on in Lebanon, what's going on in Iran and Iraq, all these places, they're all they're saying, we want peace. We want peace and safety. That's when we have to be ready. Look up, keep your eyes on the clouds, because that might be, today may be the day that Jesus is coming for us. No more pain, no more sorrow, no more crying. All these things will go away because now we will be in the presence of Almighty God because of what Jesus did for us on the cross of Calvary. So look what it says. It says, peace and safety, destruction will come to them. It says, as labor pains on a pregnant woman, they will not escape. Did you see that? He says, but you brothers are not in darkness so that the day should surprise you like a thief. You are all sons of light and sons of the day. We do not belong to the night nor of darkness. So then let us, let us not be like others who are asleep, but let us be alert and self-control. Did you see that? Let us be alert and self-control, keeping, keeping our eyes focused upon the Lord Jesus Christ, living for Him like if He's coming back today, living for Jesus like He's coming back today. See, that's why it, it was so important. In fact, let me take you to 2 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians, and I'm going to begin on chapter 2. Look at uh, uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 in the Word of God, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. I want you to understand something, that the Antichrist cannot be revealed as long as two things are still present in this world. And I want to I want to I want to read the word of God and I want to show you what it is. Are you ready? Second Thessalonians chapter uh, chapter two. And I'm going to begin on verse one. The Bible says concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our being gathered to him. We ask you, brothers, 
not to become easily unsettled or alarmed by some prophecy. Why was he saying that? Because at the time they were saying that Jesus had already come. And some of the people were saying, well, we missed it. No. The, the, uh, the Apostle Paul was saying, no, it, it, is, it is not true prophecy. There are false teachers that are out there and they're teaching other things. And the Apostle Paul says, stay focused, stay alert, stay self-controlled. Look what it says. He says, report or saying that, that, that had come from a saying that the day of the Lord has already come. Do not let anyone deceive you in any way. For that day will not come. Here it is. Pay close attention. That day will not come until the rebellion occurs and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the man doomed to destruction. Who is he talking about? He's talking about the Antichrist. Look at verse 4. Here's the key. Verse 4. It says, He who will oppose and will exalt himself over everything that is called God and or is to, is to be worshipped, so that he sets himself in God's temple, proclaiming himself to be God. Look at verse 5. Don't you remember that when I was with you, I used to tell you these things, and now you know what is holding him back. Here it is. This is what I want to, I want to put emphasis on right here. And now you know what is holding him back so that he may, so that he may be revealed at the proper time. Notice that in God, there is a, a time, there is a period of time. God is in control of everything. God is in control of the timing. This man, the, the lawlessness man, this antichrist, this son of the devil, the son of perdition will show up as the antichrist. But there are two things that are holding him back. Look at that. There are two things that are holding him back. Look what it says. For the secret of the power, verse 7, for the secret power of the lawlessness is already at work, but the one who now holds him back will continue to do so till he is taken out of the way. Did you see that? There is something, and there's two things, two things that are holding the Antichrist from coming upon this land. And, and in fact, he may already be here, but he hasn't been revealed yet. In other words, he may be walking the earth. He may be already upon this land. But he cannot be fully revealed until two things happen. One is that the church is taken away. When the rapture happens, the Antichrist will come on the scene and will have a solution to every problem in this world. And people will look to him as a, as a man that is very intelligent. He, he, is, he, he presents himself as the, the answer to the... And people will follow him. And people will follow him. In fact, the, 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 the Bible says that an image will be made of him. An image. And this image, and you can find this in Revelation 13, where it says this image will be... Uh, uh, the beast will give image, the power to this image. And this image will come alive and people will worship him. And it will, they will praise this image. And this, this image has power. This image has power. Now, so number one is that the church needs to be removed before the Antichrist can be revealed. Second thing is once the church is removed, the Holy Spirit will also go with the church. Let me take you somewhere. Look at John real quick. Let's go to the book of John. Look at John chapter. Let's go to chapter 14. Look at John 14. Thank you, Jesus. John 14. I'm about to finish. John chapter 14. Look what it says. It says, all this, uh, John chapter 14, look at verse 25. It says, all this I have spoken while still with you, but the Counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. So what is Jesus saying? Jesus said this, that I, unless I go to the Father, the Holy Spirit will not come. So how did the Holy Spirit operate in the Old Testament? How did the Holy Spirit operate in the Old Testament? The Holy Spirit in the Old Testament, when there was a job to do, the Holy Spirit would come, do what He needed to do, and then He would ascend back to heaven. He would, he would ascend back to the, to the throne of God. So He could not stay upon the earth. Why? Why? Because the, the penalty for sin 
had not yet been paid for. It is not until Jesus dies on the cross, he resurrects on the third day, and then he tells the disciples, he tells them, what does he tell them? He tells them, wait, do nothing until you receive the promise of the Holy Spirit. And in Acts chapter 1 verse 8 says, you will receive what? You will receive power. You will receive power, and you can read in Acts chapter 2 where the Holy Spirit comes and baptizes people that there is a fire upon their heads, and they began to speak in other tongues. They have been baptized in the Holy Spirit with fire and with power. Now, when Jesus dies on the cross and He ascends to heaven, when He ascends to heaven, the Holy Spirit now is released upon the earth. In other words, now the Holy Spirit now abides upon this earth. Why? Because of the church. Once the church is removed, the Holy Spirit will go with, with the church. Did we get that? Did you understand that? So when the church is removed, the Holy Spirit will leave also. So those are the two things that are holding back the Antichrist from being revealed. How close are we? We are very close. We are very close to the Antichrist being revealed. Everything that we're seeing taking place around the world, everything is chaotic. Everything is being set up for the man, the lawless man, the lawlessness man to come and take his place. And, and, then, and then the tribulation, as soon as the rapture happens, the tribulation will begin. And we'll touch on it on another day, on, on another day, on, the, on a different program. I want to touch on that. I want to touch on the tribulation. I want to touch on the second coming of Christ. I want to touch on the millennium, on the great white throne. Those are important things because when anybody ever comes and says to you, you know, the, the rapture will not happen. Uh, uh, Jesus is not going to come back. When you die, you're dead and it's over and it's done. You need to know the word of God. You need to explain to them the word of God. So that way when that person stands before God, they have no excuses that to say, no one told me about the word of God. Nobody told me about Jesus. And, 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 and it'll be written right there that, yes, someone did talk to you. This person talked to you about me. This person told you that unless you get your life right, that you would be, you would not be able to enter into my rest. So very important. I want to pray for you right now. Some of you might say, well, you know, I'm not where I should be. I, I used to serve the Lord, but right now I'm not praying. I'm not in my word. I'm not going to church. I, I just feel that I'm far away from the, from, from the Lord. But you, you might be sensing like something's about to happen. And I want to, I want to encourage you. Get back into the things of God. It's not too late. Get back into the things of, law, of, of the Lord. So I want to pray for you right now in the name of Jesus. I want to pray for you. If you are ready to make your life and you want to commit your life to the Lord, I just want you to just close your eyes and I want you to say this prayer with me. I want you to say, I want you to say Jesus, I come before you. I am a sinner and I'm asking for forgiveness. I thank you, Lord, that you died on the cross for me to set me free. I thank you, Lord, from this day forth, because you are in my heart, you are in my life. I will never, never be the same again. In Jesus' name, amen. If you made that commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ, and you're one of them that said, you know what, my life was not where it should be, but I've gotten it right, I want you to do this. I want you to send me a comment. I want you to send us an email and letting us know what Jesus has done for you. Amen. If you need prayer, I want you to call this number, 210-670-1930. If you need prayer, 670, area code 210 670 one nine three zero. We want to come in agreement. We know that God will extend His grace and His mercy. We believe that the Lord will answer your prayer because He is a good God. He is a wonderful God. What He does for me, He will also do for you in the name of Jesus. Amen. I also want to thank everyone that has come alongside of us, has supported our ministry. We are believing God for a mobile stage trailer. If you want to be a partaker in this ministry, maybe you can't do what we are doing, but when you sow into our ministry, you are also a partaker. In other words, your hands are also plowing into the ground of salvation for the families that are going to come to know the Lord Jesus Christ, for the people that are going to come to know the Lord Jesus Christ. There's four ways that you can support us in the description box below. You can support us that way. 
Also, if you want to sow into our ministry internationally, you can do that at, at and on our email. Get a hold of us at jjccministries at gmail.com. Once again, that's jjccministries at gmail.com. And we will let you know how you can do that in the name of Jesus. Be a blessing. I know that some of you have given out of, uh, have blessed. Uh, and I know God sees your effort. I know that. I know that God sees your sacrifice. God responds to sacrifice. God responds to giving. And I've seen it all my life. And, and what God does for me, He will do it for you because some of you are moving out in faith. You are believing God. And I know that God responds. God is a wonderful, good God. God responds to faith. God responds to faith. I know that the Lord will bless you. I know that the Lord will give you what you're believing in your heart. Some of you are believing for your children, your grandchildren. You're believing God for a job, for a home, whatever it may be. God is able to do it for you in the name of Jesus. This is not a gimmick. I don't believe in gimmicks and making up things. I know what works and I've seen the hand of God move in a powerful way. Amen. If you are in the San Antonio area or the surrounding city, we will be having a, a, a service, a San Antonio for Christ Church, that have invited us to minister on March 31st, 2024 at Easter service. Uh, we want to be a blessing to you if you can come. I know that God will speak to you. I know that God has a word for you. That is on March the 31st, 2024, beginning at 10 o'clock. It's going to be on a Sunday. 343 Spat Street in San Antonio, zip code 78211. I would love for you to be a part of this ministry. I know that God is going to move in a powerful way. Uh, after the service, if you come and join us, I want you to come up. I want to I want to shake your hand and I want to bless you and I want to pray for you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Those of you, I would love also to, uh, if you have a testimony, I told you in the last program, if you have a testimony, I want, I want to share it with our viewers. Let me know what Jesus Christ has done for you. I want to read it. I want to read your first name. I'm going to read the state from, that you are, you are from. And I know that your testimony may bless someone else. Your testimony may change someone else's life. So please do that. Send it to our email, jjccministries at gmail.com. I know it would be a blessing to someone else. Romans 8.31 says this, If God is for you, no one and nothing can be against you. Once again, Romans 8.31, If God is for you, no one and nothing can be against you. In the name of Jesus. We'll see you next time in the name of Jesus on the next program. We love you. Pray for us as we pray for you. We'll see you next time. God bless.